Hey everybody, this video is about testing the color wheel inside a DLP projector. This particular projector is an Optima HD20. The uh, process is more or less the same for all DLP projectors. Uh, we're going to do it first with the oscilloscope. This is uh, the preferred method in my opinion. This way you can just tell for sure if everything's working right. Uh, what we're really going to be looking for is consistency in the signal. Uh, most projectors are going to be pretty much the same, like you could more or less expect the same kind of behavior in other Optimas, but the frequency might be different, the pulse size might be different. The important thing is that it's consistent, and uh, once I show you the signal, you'll see what I mean. So in, uh, in this particular case, the uh, Optima has a wiring that does not match the color code. The uh, sensor has red for power, which makes sense, but then signal is a black wire and ground is a white wire. So you can't take that for granted that the colors are what, you know, what you'd think they'd be, because normally you'd expect black to be ground, white to be signal, and then red to be power, but it's not. And uh, what we're going to be looking for is a waveform kind of like this. When the uh, waveform bumps up like that, uh, that's the index. That's the uh, little black mark on the color wheel uh, as it goes past the uh, the sensor. Uh, this is an infrared uh, sensor that, um, you know, obviously, it's a drawing of an infrared sensor, but this is the sensor that's on the board um, that I just had up in that picture uh, where I showed the uh, uh, index mark on the color wheel and then the sensor. So blown up, these are the connections. So the ground for this side, this is the emitter right here. And then this is the uh, receiver. So I guess you could kind of say this is TX. And then this is RX. So the infrared comes out of there, reflects off the hub until the index mark goes past, that interrupts the signal and causes the pulse to happen, um, and that sends an output through here. So this is power to the module, that's ground for the LED side, that's ground for the signal side, but I imagine power shared over to here. But let's hook the scope up and then you can see you know what I'm talking about for real. So this is uh, not a real fancy scope. It was pretty inexpensive, about 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, really, if you don't have an oscilloscope, this is a great way to uh, get something that will do a lot of what you need. Um, it says 100 megahertz on it, but it's really like a 50, which really for 60 bucks isn't that bad. But anyway, let's go uh, on the signal output. And then we want to be on two milliseconds per division and I want to go down to the one volt scale just makes it a little easier the pulse itself is a little under three volts there we go now you can see it I don't have the uh, ring light washing it out so getting about 2.6 2.7 volts um, it's clocking in at about 120 Hertz so I'm getting two pulses per second um, I don't know if that varies depending on the type of color wheel, if it's a six segment, a five segment, eight segment, you know, whatever. Um, but this particular one is 120 hertz. Uh, the more important thing, as you can see, is it's stable. Those are not uh, sliding back and forth. They're not getting bigger or smaller. You know, there's a little wobble to them, but that's that's negligible. We're not worried about that. Um, what we're looking for is that that frequency is holding still and that that voltage is relatively stable. And that's, you know, this is really what you're looking for. Um, if you have a scope and you're not sure if your color wheel is speeding up or slowing down, just check it with your scope and you can be sure of that. The other thing you can do, and now this will vary by projector depending on the sensor board, this particular sensor board, the power goes right to it. Um, all of the current limiting is done inside the main board. So the output voltage to the board, or the VCC, I guess you could say, it's about 
1.1 volt. Oh, there we go. Now you can see that about 1.1 volt. And that's because it's just driving that LED and the uh, the receiver. It doesn't need, you know, 5 volts or 3 volts. All it needs is that enough to drive, uh, enough power to drive the LED. And then this white pin, obviously, like I said, is ground. Or white wire is ground. So again, make sure you see that. If you see that on your scope, you're in good shape. Now, I'm going to try with an assault, or a, a multimeter, rather, a voltmeter. Um... This is not the preferred way, in my opinion, but not everybody has access to an oscilloscope. So let's see what we can do here. Just trying to get it so that that ring light doesn't wash it out. I like this ring light because I can put my uh, phone right in the middle and it gives real nice light. Let's see. So... Uh, There we go. And now I'm not even washing out the camera with the light from this. So let's see what we get with a true RMS multimeter. So I'm just gonna grab a ground over here and on the signal, we're getting 0.82. So we might be able to say that at least on an Optima HD20 or any other projector that's like an HD20, if you're getting 0.82 volts AC, then that color wheel's probably working. Again, I don't like using a multimeter for this, at least for this type of measurement. There is another measurement I'm going to show you next that uh, I do like. Now on DC, we're getting 0.56 uh, what that's doing is it's kind of reading it as a PWM, so it's averaging the pulses and the zero. But this meter, and a lot of them, even the inexpensive ones, have a frequency counter built into it. So we can read the hertz, and since we know this one's supposed to be 120 hertz, we're getting 119.99, and that will possibly jump up to 120 at some point, but... Again, it's consistent, and the consistency is what we're looking for. If it's consistent, that means that uh, most likely the hub of the wheel is not dragging. There's no debris or anything else that's causing the wheel to change speed. So you can pretty much figure that the wheel's okay at that point, as long as the uh, pulse speed is, uh, you know, is consistent and even and doesn't fluctuate. So this would be the preferred method if you did not have an oscilloscope is to have a meter with at least a uh, frequency option in it. So really that's about it. Um, this is all you have to do to check your color wheel. These steps will carry over to just about every other projector that uses a color wheel. Uh, not all DLP projectors have color wheels. Some do it a different way, but if there's a color wheel, you're not sure if it's working right, you can use the steps that I used here to verify yours. Um, you may have a different frequency. You know, it may be 240, 60, I don't know, depends. Uh, but the consistency is what you're looking for. So if you have any other questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.